take I just want to take this time. I just want to take take this time to let you guys know that like well the great thing about doing videos like like this with just my head and like me sitting down is that I can wear sweats. I can wear sweatpants. No shoes. Because you don't see this part of me. You don't see this part of me. Okay? It's like a big cheat. Like, like it's literally like, it's literally like the guys on NFL Network that like sit behind the desk and are completely wearing like Nike like running shoes. Like they they went out into the parking lot and did a couple laps so they can, you know, still get their cardio in for the day. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm cheating the system and I just couldn't I just couldn't keep it to myself. So just know I was wearing sweatpants the whole time. <laughs>
still, I'm divergent. So I decided to be a freelancer because freelancers give you like that freedom to do whatever you want to do. Like if I decide this weekend I want to do a wedding, I'm going to do a wedding. And next Tuesday I decide to do a corporate film, I'm going to do a corporate film. And if the week after that I decide to do a sports commercial, then I do a sports commercial. But I'm not pigeonholed into just one thing. So that's why I became a freelance photographer, videographer, and digital marketer. That's my business idea. Crazy. Tip number two, plan your business. So what issue does your business solve? So my my business, I'm sorry I looked into my next true blood here. So my business solves a lot of problems, okay? Like I just told you, like either I can do a wedding this weekend, I can shoot a commercial for like a corporate, uh, you know, like a law firm next week, and then I can go and do like, you know, like a restaurant video or like some small catering business. Like it, it, I, I do a lot of stuff. Like I have actually created logos for people too. So there's some graphic design in there. Um, but if we're specific as far as just uh, what, what issue or do I solve as a business? Um, if a brand, a company is having like brand identity issues, is what we call it. It's a terminology for it. We call it brand identity issues. And they really want to create a video that shows the essence of what their company is, what it is they do, what they're about. They call me to come in there and videotape that. Now, that sounds like really simple. Like, oh, I'm just going to come in there and videotape their stuff. Like, no. It's more than that. Like, I'm writing a script. There's pre production, there's production, there's post production. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all these brainstorming ideas of like what it is that they want to come across. Who do I need to interview to get the story told, and then actually, you know, go in and edit so that it can be broadcasted on TV or you can broadcast on an Instagram ad or a Facebook ad or just something that goes on their on their you know their website when you come in and just plays or video down embedded video and in, in their website that plays. And that's another thing to do too, coding. So I do a lot. But at the end of the day, we know that I just helped with service like that. That was that was their issue, and my business solved that issue by doing X, Y, and Z. You see, it's not so hard. It's not hard. You just gotta sit there and think about it for a second. It's 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. 2.5. Form your business. So that could be a sole proprietorship, LLC, or a corporation. Um, but starting out, you just want to do sole proprietorship. I don't know why, where else I'm looking at it. It's a bit more exciting about that. You want to start a sole proprietorship. Um, starting out, you want to start as a sole proprietorship. Um, it's one or two people that work or is the business entity. Now, unless you're starting off with like five or ten people, then you could you could skip on up to you know, LLC, but it's really no need if you don't. But like I said, it's one of those videos down the road. Where I'll go into more detail because there's sole proprietorship, there's LLC, there's S Corp, there's corporation. I think there's another one in there, different type of LLC. But starting out, really, if it's just you and one other person, or like I said, it's just you, sole proprietorship. And sole proprietorship is the type of enterprise that's owned and run by one person and in which there's no legal distinction between the owner and the business entity. So, uh, specifically here in the state of Tennessee, my sole proprietorship cost me only $16. For the whole year so it's not some crazy number a crazy price to you know to file for sole proprietorship so don't worry about it just, just do it just, just get it done so i don't know if i'm saying tip number four or step number four but um either way you know you, you get what i'm saying so let's go with tip number four so tip number four is registering the business for taxes I know that's that's probably the most exciting thing about this is taxes. Uh, I'm not a big fan of taxes, but at the end of the day, we got to do it. And I don't want that IRS coming for you. So, um, so you have to register your business for taxes, okay? And so when you register your business, you obtain an EIN, which is an employer identification number. And with that employer identification number, you get to use that number to open up business accounts, get credit cards. Well, I don't know too much about the credit card part. But you know what? I haven't got I haven't got that far. I have really not gotten that far to open up a credit card. I'm looking at a credit card like 
Chase business preferred, like ink platinum, like really cool, like flyer miles card, but I'll give you more info on that one. I actually open that one up. Yeah, but as far as right now, as far as a business account goes, you gotta get that EIM. And actually that jump starts us into step. There we go again. I don't know. Step number five, tip number five, and that's business and credit accounts. So after you register for an EIN, then you can open up a business account. Is this thunder out in the middle of the day? Anyway, sorry, I got distracted. Anyway, so you can open up a business or a business account. That's what you get to do. You get to open up a business account. And so with that business account, um, you can take payments. I think that's probably the most important thing because when you're able to take payments with your business account, you can be able to write off some taxes and oh my God. Here we go again. Jump start in step six, tip six. I'll figure it out which one, which way I want to go with this. Ah, anyway. So tip six, you can set up accounting. Now, with accounting, you can download the QuickBooks app and purchase the self-employed version for only $5 a month for the first three months. And QuickBooks is actually really easy to use as far as accounting goes. You can file quarterly or you can file annually. You can swipe left or right, whether something is personal or something's actually business related. You can write off your car, you can write off your gas. That's a very important one. You can also track your miles, which is really important because what I do, I travel a lot, so I get to write off that. And um, what else do you get to do that's really great about accounting is filing your taxes and making sure you don't pay a lot of money at the end of the year because you're taking L's everywhere. L's, 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 L's. That's one thing too, starting your business in the beginning, you take a lot of L's. Um, uh, uh, yeah, camera equipment is like really expensive. Lighting is really expensive. And therefore, when you show in your taxes that you spent, you know, $1,500 on a camera, or better yet on a lens, that's an L. You took an L. In this business, for my business, I took it out. Dodging those taxes. Don't do not do that. Don't dodge your taxes. Just pay taxes, but I'm saying you won't pay like this astronomical amount because at the end of the day, you literally just got $3,000 and you just spent $16,000 on a camera. So they're, they feel bad for you. And I feel bad for you too. I feel bad for myself. But at the same time, when you invest in your equipment, stuff comes out real, really, really nice. So like this lens. I will not tell you how much this lens that I'm using costs, but it wasn't cheap. <laughs> so I finally figured out that I'm gonna start using the word steps because I, I believe that I started out this video with the word steps. And honestly, probably when I go into editing, realize I actually started saying tips. Well, that changes everything. Probably have, you know, some words up here in the corner saying what I was supposed to say, but who cares? Okay, it's my video. That point that I do what I want. So. Step number seven. I think we're on step number seven. Somebody please tell me we're on step number seven. Yes, yeah, step number seven. Obtaining permits and license. So I was working with a client, uh, and this client actually wanted to, now I'm not gonna give her idea away or anything like that, but it has to do with nutrition. And in the state of Tennessee, I really feel like anywhere else when it comes to nutrition, especially if you're trying to sell plans, meal plans, or trying to do um, sell exercise and things like that, you at least have to have some kind of license, whether that is just a, uh, I think it's a personal trainer, just like a regular basic personal training, you don't have to be like health and human performance um, major or anything like that, have a degree in it, but you just have to have some kind of permit saying that you can at least help people with that. And, you know, obviously have some terms and conditions or some liability saying that, you know, you're not a licensed doctor or anything like that. And you need to consult your doctor before you continue doing or taking my advice. You know, disclaimer. That's what it is. Disclaimer. So, um, but this lady actually, um, with this client, actually um, went to school. Um, actually, MTSU has a couple of couple degrees. She's a very, very fancy lady. Um, anything. So, but she's, she's a licensed dietitian. So she's, she's got all that in place. Um, but there was another person, um, that wanted to sell, uh, meal plans and workout plans. But I was like, wait a minute, time out, flag on the play. I don't know if you have, you know, a license for that. And it's just like, you know, had me thinking like, hmm, you know, the last thing you want to do is get a lawsuit like that because you don't 
um, a license. Depending on what you're doing, what you're selling, I know like as far as like alcohol, you have to have a license for that, obviously, oddly. But in some cases, you know, you don't have to have a license. Like for me, I don't have to have a license to be a digital marketer. Now, as far as credibility goes, like I do have my degree, so that does help. But there's other things that I'm looking later on to get certification in just for my credibility. But I don't have to have them to have this business. I don't have to have a license to be a photographer. I don't have to have a license to be a videographer or anything like that. And, you know, honestly, when it comes to that kind of stuff, people are able to just look at my uh, my films and my body of work to know that like, I am legit. So, especially my portfolio for my photography, know that I'm legit. But with some things, seriously, in the state of Tennessee or elsewhere, you gotta find out those things. And all you gotta do is Google it and find out if you need a license for your business. I actually looked up mine, I did not need one, so when I was like, wow, if I did need one, I was a little salty, just a little bit, especially since I spent $80,000 on my, my education. So I was like, eh, I feel like this degree is good enough, but okay, fine. Fine. And by the way, I just found out that I have an APS-C on this camera. Cropped. No. <laughs> Step number eight. Get insured. Or getting insured. Or whatever the fancy terminology is for it to make me sound smarter. General liability insurance policies typically cover you and your company for claims involving bodily injuries and property damage resulting from your products, services, or operations. It may also cover you if you are held liable for damages to your landlord's property. So, so with my business particularly, um, say, for instance, say, you know, I got lighting equipment up and things like that, things plugged up and taking pictures, you know, got the speed light going and whatnot, and someone trips over my wire. And maybe something seriously actually happens or nothing serious happens, but either way, it goes to sue me for $2,000. Well, guess what? I got general liability insurance. And if you shop the web, there's different uh, deals out there. I've seen some as low as $30, some that you can build, you know, I just need this part of the insurance package and this part of the insurance package to build my own package so that it, it, it's affordable to me and after working in insurance for a little brief time it's once you know the lingo and how it goes it's, it's it makes more sense but when you don't know it's like what what huh what, what is a copay a deductible and a co-insurance let me tell you, it's literally the same thing. You just get it. You have to pay someone pretty much. So, um, but that's another YouTube for another day. I'll go into detail about that. But I promise you, if I talk about just the insured part, we'll be here for 35 minutes and nobody got time for that. So, get insured. Get insured. Get insured. Get insured. So, step nine. Step nine. Tip number nine. We're all almost there, guys. Define your brand. You gotta define your brand. And how you define your brand is setting the standard, whether that be photos or videos. And I would tell you this is a shameless book to hire me to define your brand, but at the same time, I, it is the internet. A lot of stuff you can actually look up and figure out and see, you know, what's the best camera out there to buy. Now sometimes, number one, that's a lot of work. Number two, I don't have time to do all that. So then you hire somebody like me or other people that do it. Some people that just all they do, they just do product photography, they just do food photography. And you hire them some, I've heard of an HR like $75 for image, something like that, to build your menu. I mean, there's, <laughs> just set the standard. Like the whole point of step nine, tip nine, is to set the standard, whether that's video or photos of your brand because it's reflective of you. So when I was in college for marketing, Try to tell my um, and he listened. So let's just let's just get that out there. It's not one of those like he didn't listen. Like he listened to me when I told him I was like, listen. And we're over here trying to sell pop sockets, and I'll show you the picture here too. You know, we can't sell. A, we can't just put a picture of pop sockets on the desk and spread them out and be like, hey, tonight at three o'clock to get you a pop socket. Like yeah, some people are gonna come anyway because I want a pop socket. I want a free Chattanooga pop socket. But let's just let's just be engaging let's let's you know let's, let's set the tone let's let's get them interested let's catch their eye when they're scrolling like ooh, that's a pop socket that's a dope pop socket and also too they see what it looks like on the back of the person's phone so look at what 
my boss used to do here. And look at the picture I took of the pop socket. Set the standard. Okay, that's all you gotta do. Just think about it, be creative. And if you ain't got time to be creative because you are running your business and you're trying to do your thing, well, hire somebody else. You know, can't do everything. Can't do everything. So, all right. So, I'm just gonna let you guys know that my hair has changed like 12 times in this video because I can't stop playing with it. It's not a nervous habit, it's just I'm trying to cover up the imperfections of this hair being in for quite some time and I need to get it redone. So, step 10, tip 10. Um, last but not least, no, it is last. Uh, web presence. Establish web presence. Okay, so this is really important. You know what? Uh, stop it. It's all important, okay? These 10 steps, these 10 steps are all important. Whether you do them in order or not, it's important, okay? So, um, web presence. You know, you can do Facebook, you can get a, you know, you can do Instagram for the time being, but there comes a point in time where you need to get that web page up. Now, thankfully, we are in 2019 where you don't have to have coding experience to build a website. Either way it goes, you don't have to have any coding experience to build a really, really dope website. And like I said, my website is powered by Squarespace. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it took me like a year to build that website just for the simple fact that I'm like really OCD, but in a good way because like I said, I wanted to make, well, you know, it wasn't even like the OCD really. It was just the fact that um, every time I turned around, I had a new idea and I wanted to change it. But for now, like for the past, I think like six months, it's been pretty consistent and that's what my website is. Establish a web presence. Depending on whether you're selling a product or a service, depends on really the, the hosting site or hosting engine or whatever you want to call it that um, you use for your website. Now you can do coding, you can actually you know build it yourself or like I think copy and paste WordPress like template or something like that. But other than that, you know for me, people like me who are like, I know how to code and I want to do a little bit of coding in the website but at the same time I still want somebody else to handle all of uh, this is actually where stuff blows my mind as far as like domains and like web presence and you know making sure like this area of the website is mine like it's like a physical property let, let this company deal with it so my website is powered by Squarespace and I love it I was actually with Wix didn't like it it was dumpster fire dumpster fire doo doo butter I don't know what you want to call it I didn't like it so I went to Squarespace and I have a look back and I love it and so I think my website is very clean. I go in there and change it. I actually can update my website on my phone, which I think is probably the like best feature ever. Cause I tell you, man, I'll be randomly like walking in Walmart and all of a sudden with some bread and butter in my hand, I'm like, oh, I need to change the prices to my wedding packages. One moment while I go and change that. So I felt like that was really extra, but still, so that's literally me. It's ADHD in me. But anyway, though, so. Web presence is important. It is possibly your credibility where people get your it's it's your portfolio. It is reflective of you. So when you have the time to do it and you have the money to do it, go ahead and establish that web presence. And if you don't know how to do it, I promise you there's other people that you can hire. That's another shameless plug. I mean I'm not I mean I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this to promote my business, but if you need me, I am here. So, write out a blueprint and everything and build your website and <laughs> have it up and running. So, uh, that's my last tip. And like I said before, um, I'm going to try to upload these videos every Friday and we'll go into more detail about these different tips. You know, because I kind of try to touch on each one and not be like stupid OCD and OCD. Stupid, like, go off in these rabbit holes of what I can say because I promise I can talk to you all day about this stuff. Okay, so, so, like I said, um, that's it. That's all I got for you today. Those are my 10 tips, and I'll be going into detail on each one of those tips every week of August, maybe into September. That's a lot of videos. And like, oh, phew, we might drop this out for three months, but either way it goes. 
you're gonna get a lot of good a lot of good information and case studies in a very entertaining way because honestly when I hear the word case study I kind of like was something about studying I'm just kidding no studying is fun when it's something that you're actually interested in so and it's something that you need to know I didn't care about anything about music appreciation in my first year of college so good teacher didn't care anything about them so if you like this video please that like button and if you are into the kind of stuff that I'm talking about because I promise you there's gonna be more how to's there's gonna be tutorials there's gonna be reviews shoot there's gonna be vlogs because why not? I mean, if you followed me on Snapchat, you know my life is lit. No, it was lit in college. I don't know too much right now because I I take a lot of naps. I took I took some naps in college, but I'm really, I stepped up my nap game. <clears throat> okay, now, as a full-fledged adult. I was a full-fledged adult now, but I'm really a full-fledged adult now. I'm like half 30. So, anyway. <laughs> If you like this kind of stuff, like this kind of material, feel motivated and inspired, please subscribe. It does help. And also push the bell, wherever the button is, the bottom, to subscribe to this channel, you know, or hit the bell so you're notified. Um, so that's all I have for today. So that's all I have for today. So you know what to do. I'll let you do it. Thank you.